The Pennsylvania Turnpike is an engineering marvel and one of the longest toll roads in America. In fact, this turnpike is said to be the first to introduce concepts like the mile marker, futuristic tunnel ventilation systems, and ultimately, electronic toll collection. But did you know that 13 miles of America's first superhighway was actually abandoned back in the 1960s? That's right, and ever since it has sat untouched with eerie reminders such as the sidling hill and raised tunnels, cavernous portals that are reminiscent of a bygone time. This is the story of Pennsylvania's Lost Highway. I'm your host Ryan Sokash and you're watching It's History. Our story starts at a time when Americans were in a state of crisis. Indeed, it all started during the Great Depression. The Great Depression was a severe worldwide economic crisis that lasted from 1929 to the late 1930s. It was triggered by a combination of factors, including the stock market crash of 1929. Anyhow, this sudden and catastrophic collapse wiped out billions of dollars in value and caused widespread panic among investors, leading to a wave of bank failures as people rushed to withdraw their savings. And as institutions collapsed, the effects were wide-reaching. During the Great Depression, people in Pennsylvania, like those in many other parts of the United States, faced significant economic challenges and hardships. As an industrial and manufacturing hub, Pennsylvania was particularly affected by the economic downturn. Suffering unemployment, thousands of workers lost their jobs, and the industrial decline followed. Remember, Pennsylvania was known for its coal mining, steel production, and manufacturing industries. However, during the Depression, demand for coal and steel dropped dramatically, leading to shutdowns of mines and mills. So basically, the mines shut down, leaving the population to suffer from homelessness, poverty, and all the rest of it. But thanks to the New Deal, state-sanctioned job opportunities began popping up, and Pennsylvanians were called upon to build America's greatest roadway. Public's work programs created the economic stimulus needed to get the country back on its feet, but it was also a pinnacle for modernization. The new highway would bring economic benefits beyond just the immediate jobs created for its construction. Communities along the planned route would see a boost to business and communities. Commerce trade would be revolutionized, making it much faster to move goods across the state. Plus, a tourist industry could service many interesting points along the Turnpike's route. Then, ultimately, real estate prices were predicted to appreciate. So on May the 21st, 1937, the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission was created to oversee the planning, construction, maintenance, and operation of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. To finance the construction of the Turnpike, the Commission issued government bonds. They then commissioned Michael Baker Jr. Incorporated under the guidance of Chief Engineer and Founder Michael Baker to oversee the road design. The design of the Pennsylvania Turnpike was groundbreaking for its time and set the stage for the development of modern limited access highways as we now know them. One of the Pennsylvania Turnpike's most innovative features was the concept of limited access, meaning that the highway was designed to have controlled entrances and exits minimizing the numbers of access points to ensure smooth traffic flow and reduced congestion. It was also a divided highway with separate lanes for each direction of traffic, which significantly reduced the risk of head-on collisions. Grade separations, including overpasses and interchanges, eliminated the need for vehicles to stop at intersections. Tunnels and bridges navigated through challenging terrain, passing through mountains or bodies of water while maintaining a consistent vehicle grade. The turnpike's wide lanes and generous median provided ample vehicle space and contributed to a sense of safety and comfort for drivers. And the list goes on from there, but now that the design was ready, construction could begin. Construction of the Pennsylvania Turnpike began on October the 27th, 1938 with an official groundbreaking ceremony, but it wasn't an easy project. Labor strikes plagued construction, World War II caused a resource shortage, and there was a horrific tunnel collapse in 1940 when a part of the Blue Mountain Tunnel caved in, resulting in the untimely passing of three workers. All the same, the first section of the turnpike known as the Philadelphia Extension opened to traffic on October the 1st, 
1940. The completion of the entire original alignment of the Pennsylvania Turnpike, spanning from the Ohio state line to New Jersey state line, occurred in the mid-1950s. The final section of this alignment, known as the Harrisburg Extension, opened to traffic on December the 21st, 1954, marking the beginning of a new era in highway infrastructure for the United States. As the Pennsylvania Turnpike was one of its first long distance, limited access highways, and perhaps it's safe to assume that after nearly two decades of work, no one could have imagined that massive sections of the roadway would be outright abandoned just a few years after their completion. By the 1960s, automotive technology had changed, allowing for larger trucks that required a greater clearance on tunnels. Additionally, road standards in general had changed meaning that some parts of the road were deemed to be too dangerous for continued use. Hence, the first section of the Pennsylvania Turnpike to be abandoned was the stretch near Breezewood, Pennsylvania. This abandoned section includes two disused tunnels, the Sidling Hill Tunnel and the Rays Hill Tunnel. Long story short, this area was bypassed in the 1960s when the Turnpike was realigned and expanded to accommodate increasing traffic and higher design standards. Perhaps most notable was that the decision to bypass this section was made due to challenges posed by the tunnel's low clearance and need for improved roadway geometry to accommodate modern vehicles. Today, this abandoned section has become a unique attraction for tourists, hikers, cyclists, and urban explorers drawn to the eerie and nostalgic atmosphere of the tunnels and the overgrown roadway. The second section of the Pennsylvania Turnpike to be abandoned is the stretch near Baltimore, Pennsylvania. This abandoned section includes the Laurel Hill Tunnel and the Allegheny Mountain Tunnel. Like the Breezewood section, this area was bypassed during the 1960s realignment and expansion of the Turnpike. The decision to abandon this section was driven by the need to modernize the Turnpike to accommodate higher traffic volumes and larger vehicles. The Allegheny Mountain Tunnel, in particular, had a relatively low clearance that needed to be compatible with modern trucking standards. As with the Breezewood section, the abandoned Laurel Hill Tunnel and Allegheny Mountain Tunnel have attracted attention from tourists, history enthusiasts, and urban explorers interested in exploring what remains of this iconic highway's infrastructure. Historians believe this issue was predicted from the start, as some of the tunnels included were initially built for trains. When the Pennsylvania Turnpike opened in 1940, it was known as the Tunnel Highway because it traversed several tunnels from east to west. This included Blue Mountain, Kittatinny Mountain, Tuscarora Mountain, Sidling Hill, Rays Hill, Allegheny Mountain, and Laurel Hill. There was one tunnel through each mountain, and the highway was reduced to a single lane in each direction through each tunnel. Curiously, these tunnels were originally built as a part of the South Pennsylvania Railroad. The Quemahoming, Negro Mountain, and original Allegheny Mountain tunnels were bypassed during the actual construction of the Turnpike. However, by the late 1950s, the Turnpike was so heavily used that the traffic congestion demanded expansion because bottlenecks at the remaining two-laned tunnels had become a major problem. Traffic jams formed at each tunnel, especially during the summer, hence the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission conducted studies on either expanding or bypassing the existing tunnels. Following these studies, the PTC decided to construct new tubes at four tunnels and bypass the remaining three. As we mentioned before, the Sidling Hills and Rays Tunnels were bypassed by a 13-mile-long new highway, as was the Cove Valley Travel Plaza, located on the westbound side of the eastern portal of the Sidling Hill Tunnel. Instead, a new Sidling Hill Tunnel Travel Plaza was built to cater to travelers in both highway directions. And so it was. The new turnpike bypasses of Rays Hill and Sidling Hill Tunnels opened to traffic on November the 26th, 1968. Although the old highway was abandoned, it saw various uses over the years. For example, in the early 1970s, the emissions levels of unleaded gasolines were tested in the Rays Hill Tunnel. The PTC and PennDOT also used this highway to train maintenance workers, as well as for testing of rumble strips. There have also been numerous military uses for the highway, 
with one idea suggesting that the tunnels could be a good storage area for weapons, with the open sections of the abandoned highway used to store aircraft. The military also used the highway for training soldiers for the Iraq War in the early 2000s. The site of the former Cove Valley Travel Plaza was used as a shooting range for the Pennsylvania State Police, and although warning signs are still present in the area, it no longer serves this purpose. Then, in 2008, the highway was used for filming the Dimension Films movie, The Road. The studio mildly restored the exterior of the eastern portal of the Rays Hill Tunnel when it was being used for filming. Today, the abandoned Pennsylvania Turnpike was sold to the Southern Alleghenies Conservancy for $1 in 2001. In turn, the property is managed by Friends of the Pike to Bike, a coalition of nonprofit groups hoping to convert the stretch into a bike trail eventually. The property is officially closed to the public and no motor vehicles are allowed, but it is said that bicycle riders are free to use it at their own risk. The trail requires helmets and lights because this stretch sits on parts of the former right-of-way of the South Pennsylvania Railroad that was never completed but later formed the basis of the mainline turnpike. Making the bike to pike an unofficial rail trail, the PTC still owns about a quarter mile of the west and 3.5 miles of the east for maintenance purposes. The tunnel's entrances have deteriorated due to vandalism, and their signboards were taken somewhere between 1981 and 1999. However, the tunnel's structure is still sound, despite not being maintained for decades. The Pennsylvania Turnpike feels historic, and although I've personally traveled this roadway in its entirety countless times, I had no idea that there were abandoned sections along the way leading me to wonder just what else is out there. You can let me know by sending your episode suggestions on Instagram or in the comments section below. And until next time, I'm Ryan Sokash, signing off.